Hi YouTubers, welcome back to Allotment Diggers. Well, we've got a lot to get through today. A lot of things have been, do have been doing um, on the car boots this morning, but that all will come clear in the, as the video goes along. But what I thought I'd do is start off with a bit of a tour, show you around the plot, show you what's been happening. It'll be the first, um, up, first tour this year. You get some idea what's been happening. We had a bit of a disaster with the Bunyard's exhibition, but um, I'll explain more on the tour, so... Here's a tour and we'll be right Well guys, back. we're coming down onto the plot. We're going to have a quick tour of the plot today. I can tell you it's brass monkey weather and uh, my breathing's terrible, so... If you hear me huffing and puffing, you're going to have to excuse it. But as you can see, the hanging baskets here are starting to come to life now. All these planters here are all starting to come to life, but it's... As you can hear, the ground's frozen. These planters, flowers are coming up into them. Around here, all the flowers back out a bit. Strawberries, uh, well, you can't really see them because of the sun shining on them, but they look a lot better than they did after we cleaned them. As you can see, we've got frost in this bed here. And I'm starting to see signs of life. You come down here, you probably just see these these are crocuses, these. And you probably can just start to see one or two of them are actually coming up now uh, along the boards. In the next three or four weeks, there'll be flowers everywhere here, all over, completely covered. This bed, well, these are what we put in last year, and these are already starting to come up now, as you can see. These are all daffodils, these are tat the tat All starting to come through All the way along the boards are coming through now But again We've piled a couple of hundred bulbs in here as well And they're going to start coming up shortly But the ground is frozen Solid Coming along here All these hanging bass, all these uh, planters The bulbs are starting to come through Again Hanging basket there on the floor, the bulbs, hundreds of bulbs in these. All these are all starting to come through now. I don't know if you can see these. Uh, table over there. See all the bulbs coming up, all coming through here. It's absolutely piles. Every one of these have got bulbs in. And the, let's see these ones coming up. But uh, all these along this table are coming up. That's got to go back in the shed, that. That's my um, workbench. Again, all coming up now, along the top here. There's one there. I'm not too sure what these ones are, but I do, I think they that one's a, a white flower, and that one's a red, like, I, I can't remember what the name is, but when they come up, we'll show you. Empty. We drain the water out of that. Again, more bulbs there coming up. I think these are crocuses. There's all different types of crocuses. Again, uh, this bed here, we give it a bit of a hoeing the other day in that one. And the reason why we did it is to get all the little creepy crawlies up on the top and let the frost deal with them. Yeah, we had to take the the Bunyan's exhibition out. They succumbed to the, the conditions which have been violent on her. I mean, minus 10. Um, average wet, average um, nights about minus 4, 5. Um, we've had hailstone. We've had solid ice on here. We've had torrential rain. That's hailstone, snow. We've had the old nine yards on this, and they, they just couldn't take it. There, me girls. The water's just water's unfrozen. It's not frozen. <laughs> Here's uh, Endina, nosy bugger. And there the rest of the girls. Some of the rest of the other girls. Uh, we do need some uh, wood chip for the floor, desperately. Come down here, have a look at. Oh, let's back up a bit. I'll show you what we've done with the roof here. We took the uh, plastic off the roof on the top here. 
it's exterior ply. We've actually got these panels that are already made, we just need to put them in. On the inside, if you look up here, as you can see, that's what it should look like. And it's absolutely bone dry in here. Absolute bone dry, so what are you doing? Hey? Hey? And what's Lady Di doing there with you? Endina, Lady Di. I think I've got something to Now you've already had some um, treats. Pair of you. Hey? Ah, cheeky little devils. Let's continue the tour. Rhubarb starting to come up. I've just twisted my bloody ankle. Oh dear. So we're going to start hobbling now. You can see the rhubarb just starting to come through. We're going to be using that liner to grow something in. This is the burning new burning bin. That there is for compost. Full. <laughs> this is where we're going to be putting the um, chicken coop. We're going to cover it over for the time being. That pond there. Don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. We got a pump and um, lights. Pay twenty quid for a lot. Well, mate of mine, Mark, saw the pump, and uh, well, that was it. He wanted the pump. So so far, I'm ten quid up, and uh, I've got a pond and the, the lights what go around it. So I'm not I'm not too sure what to do with that yet. But that's where the the coops going. These are uh, compost bins. That's got to go at the tip. That's a uh, that's a uh, compost as well. Bins are full. These are blueberries on here. Water tank. We just broke the ice for the birds. I mean, that bloody ice. That's last night. That's about ten milli fit That. Some leaves, what needs to go at the back of the plot. A load of potatoes there, but the buckets are frozen, so we can't do any reveals at the moment. I wanted to come on this morning and uh, hold this bed up and uh, do the same what I've done over there, but it's frozen. There's a few cabbages hanging in there. What's doing really well is the, the garlic. I don't know if you can see that, but just look at it. It's stood up beautifully. It's perfectly beautiful and green and healthy. And uh, yeah, that's one thing what loves the cold. And uh, as you can see, it's doing wonderfully there. We do need to tidy all these bushes up at the back here. That's the next job around the pond area. Um, all the trees, obviously, we picked all the leaves up now. Look at these little spaceships here, you're probably wondering what they are. Well, I've got a little clip I'm going to show you in a bit, what they are. And, um, well, watch this space. Moving on down here. I chop this off, because uh, it was right in the bloody way, in the path. But if you look here, you can see all the plants coming all along the borders here, and all these planters here are all coming alive. Right down the centre of the allotments is the daff daffodils are coming up there as well. Some lovely narcissus. The rhubarb here, every one of them has started to um, pop up now. So even that small one there's uh, made an appearance. But this bed, there's three rows of, of flowers all the way around here. You're only seeing the, the original ones from last year. But right the way around, it's absolutely covered with bulbs. Same with this bed here. You can probably just see one just poking through now, but I guarantee you underneath all this arsenal, you're, there's absolutely hundreds of tulips and daffodils. We've been um, clearing the centre of the, the crowns out of these um, current bushes. And uh, the, the benefit from that in the year. Uh, this sedum, you're probably wondering why I've left this here. But if you look here, you can see the sedum now. It's starting to come through. Growth. 
Now the last thing I want to do is cut this back before that new growth comes up because what will happen is I'll probably hit it with a spade so once it gets about 3-4 inches high then we'll cut these off and we'll be good to go but they go right the way along this edge here. This is a... Uh, well we've done nothing with this yet. I was going to put the strawberries in. We will do eventually. Um, it's not a problem at the moment. Again, this is another bed which is uh, full of... Foot. The bulbs are starting to break through. You can see them everywhere here. It's like a carpet of them. Underneath that blue tarpaulin there is a picket fence to go around the strawberries eventually. All these uh, hanging baskets. You can start seeing these crocuses there, more there. On the top here. Ooh, what's that? What's upside down? That bugger. It's not going to go in. What is it? Yeah, the ground's solid. Never mind. That one might not make it, but all the others are. So that's basically um, what it's looking like. It's bloody not that over there. That's a little um, golden delicious. That there's thyme. Stuff in there. So I don't know what's in there, but there's a load of plants in. I think there are alliums in here. Uh, in there, we need to tidy these up. Cosmos in there and what have you. But there's other bulbs in there, tulips and what have you. So we need, to, with all this fencing here, I can't get in there to, to get them. But we will be doing it very soon. And um, yeah, there's all tulips and daffodils and all sorts in them. So there you go, and just here at the side, look at these ones here. These are almost 10 inches high, some of them. So that's the plot, and as you can see, it's the frost, the sun's actually melting the frost now. Little done it down there. But uh, if you look up here, there's a problem. Blue skies. We've got an easterly wind blowing now. Nice shot of the flag there in the wind. But all the way around. Clear blue skies. The sun doesn't get much higher than that at this time of year. And uh, tonight it's going to be minus five, minus six on here tonight. Maybe even lower. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's nice at the moment. So that's the plot. That's what it looks like. January the 12th, anyway. So as you saw there, bloody Bunyard's exhibition. We've had yo-yo weather, guys. Minus 10, 13 degrees the next day. Minus 6. Next day, it's like five six degrees then it starts snowing then it pours and pours in rain for a couple of days and then it freezes over and the sun comes out melts it all then it freezes over again and this is what it's been like so them beans have absolutely been hammered with the frost the the, the ice it's hail stoned on him it's had the old nine yards we thought we were protecting them and uh, that that covering did nothing it just killed them we tied them up they, they just wouldn't have it anyway we've we've lost them so i've started some more i'm not going to show you that clip we did exactly what we've done with the others they're in toilet rolls in the middle greenhouse and uh, we'll show you that again um as i was going around there you probably noticed them little um green pots on the trees well this is what they are hi guys well what you're looking at here um uh, what you call wasp traps. Now, you probably were wondering um, what the the things are hanging from my trees. I bet you've been thinking the decorations, <laughs> but no, um, they're these wasp traps, and we had them. We put them onto the um, trees last year, and we had a mat result in um, fruit not being damaged. Now I'll open the packet, and we we'll take them out. Now these are well worth the money. Um, these, these screw, you know, you, you can screw them on and off uh, by doing that. That's it, they're solid now. And um, they just hang on the trees 
Now, I found the best way to, to put these on the trees. I'm going to demonstrate it now. So there's my fingers, the branch, okay? So what you do, you don't put the bottom on straight away. You put the you put the bottom on last, and what happens? You loop it over like that, and uh, it causes no damage. You can just you know bring it back, flip it off like that, and you know take it off. But the easiest way is to go like that through the hoop, and there you go, it's on. And then uh, what I do, I put um, I put beer into this now. The fond of Boddington's, uh, the f any sort of alcohol, it doesn't matter as long as it's you know it's beer. Um, obviously, you screw the, the top on very carefully, and you just let them sit there on the trees, and um, within days they fill up. Uh, they really do. They fill up with um, all the wasps and flies. They catch absolutely thousands of flies, and they're well worth the the, the money. Now you're probably going to be shocked when I tell you how much they cost these. Um, but uh, you get the two of them for 99 pence from Ulm and Bargain. Now I don't know if they've got any in store now. It was a, a couple of it was a couple of months ago I bought these a few months back. But um, yeah, people have been asking me about them. What are they? What are these little spaceship things? What are on your, your trees? Well, to 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 catch all the wasps. And um, like I say, the result um, in fruit this year has been amazing. Um, there's been hardly any damage at all to me, uh, my apples. Uh, there's other ways, there's cheaper ways to, I suppose, to um, to do to, to catch the wasps and what have you. But the reason why I bought these as well, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a split. I've actually decided what I'm going to do is put a split into here put soil into them and then put them over um, a nodule on a, on a tree uh, obviously close the lid completely encase it in um, in soil and just let them hang on the trees like that and hopefully we will get roots to come off the, off the branch and then what I do is cut the branch um, just after the nodule and then I've got an instant um, fruit tree so that's what I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna do um, with them that's why I bought so many. I bought about ten of them. Um, I've got another, probably got another six, so eight at home plus the ones on the trees. So uh, yeah, that's what I was going to do. But they make the they, they do really well. They do work um, exceptionally well at catching wasps. So that's what the little spaceships on the trees are, guys. Ninety nine pence for two. Now there's the result. So for catching flies and wasps, then they work really well. A bit of um, Boddington's in them, and um, yeah, the goods to go, and they ca they do work. Last year we had we just had four on the trees last year, and um, the the results in the the fruit was uh, is about fifty percent better than it normally is. They always got little holes in them and what have you, but um, yeah, the wasps and the flies seem to like the the beer rather than the apples. And um, yeah, it really did work. We've got several. We've got a load more, so it'd be like lit up like a Christmas tree that um, comes spring. As soon as the blossoms have fallen off and the the fruits are set and they start to grow, that's when I'm going to be putting these things out. And obviously, I keep the flies away from them. And uh, we should be good to go. We should get an even better crop. Cause we only did it um, for the last few months. The, the the fruits was already you know there was a like half size when we actually put them on but yeah um on my bargains 99 pence for two bargain and i was thinking about using them putting a slit in them and actually putting them over a, a nodule on a tree and uh, putting some compost in both of them and closing it over a tree and you can see when the when the nodule when it starts to take root and then what we do is just cut up behind the nodule and we've got another another fruit tree so i was going to do that I'm not going to do it at the moment, obviously. Um, as you know, it's, we're in the middle of winter here. Um, the garlic looked absolutely wonderful, didn't it? It really did. The garlic's looking fantastic. The cabbages, yeah, well, uh, you know, they'll come good. I mean, you'd be uh, with minus six out here. Yeah, it's probably minus six out there. I need to put a thermometer outside as well, just to. But inside here, it's a two and a half, minus two and a half at the moment. It's a lot colder outside. And um, yeah, um, all the, the bulbs are starting to come up now, as I was showing you there, the planters are all coming to life, um, all the beds. It won't be long before um, 
you know, be, you know, be, you'd be able to see them a, a lot clearer. But the ground's frozen; it's like bloody concrete out there. Um, we was doing a bit of um, tilling uh, yesterday, and I'm glad we did it yesterday. We did a couple of beds. Here's me just put a, a, a rake, not a rake, a hole through a couple of beds. Well, just thought I'd put the hole through the, these two beds here, loosen the soil up a bit, let the frost get at it again. And that's what breaks it down to a fine tilth, guys. It's uh, been frozen solid, this. I'm mean, just grab an handful. Absolutely perfect. So, like I say, we've uh, just give these two a, a good rake in, or hoe in I should say. Um, I would have loved to have had them broad beans in there, um, survive, but good God, minus 10. I just barely survived that. Now the reason we did that was to disturb all the bugs what are down in the underneath the soil, lift them up, and hopefully what was hoping for was a frost which I knew was going to be here because it was clear skies yesterday and that frost will take care of the rest of the, the grubs we was, going to do a, we was going to do a third bed but I just run out of steam and I couldn't do it so I've left that unfortunately that's solid now so I can't do that but um, yeah that's what we do we, we, we will be putting um, we will be uh, giving them a good owen again before we put anything in them um, we've got the onions in the greenhouse, they're good, they're doing alright, we'll be putting them out mid-February, they should be okay, they should get off to a great start then, because they're not having to deal with the the, winter, the, the, the harshness of winter, or I'll say that February can be really cold as well, and uh, minus 10 we got down to, oh my god, so yeah anyway, we've that's, we did a bit of hoeing, um, uh, we come on a few days before that, uh, come on to give the chickens a little treat and some sweet corn, cabbage and croutons and stuff like that. And I've
come on as early. I'm glad I come on early. And what did I go and do? Top lock off. Snap. The bloody the band the, the key snapped in the barrel on the bottom lot and it was it was drizzling as well which made it even worse anyway we just went up the car got some bullnose pliers that couldn't it was just too far in so the only other choice I had to go home find some tweezers and also um, as a backup my angle grinder now these locks cost me 19 quid for the pair not cheap they're master locks b and q I'll tell you more about them in a minute anyway this is what I go folks, if I can't get this out of here, it looks like we're going to have to chop the lock off and all it seems to be doing is going further in. So, uh, there's nothing I can really do about it. So I bang it so it comes down, but no, it's not having none of it. Tweezers are not cracking doing it so unfortunately we're going to have to cut the lock off there I didn't want to do it coming out of the way girls I've got to be careful I don't bloody spray them with this Well, it's not the thing I want to be doing on New Year's Day, guys. But, unfortunately, it has to be done. And uh, I think I've not got it the best way there. Right. We may, <laughs> we may have to chop it right off. Unbelievable. Come on girls, give me a break. Yeah, we'll have to chop that up as well, bloody hell. Go on, shoot. Well, that really sucks. Luckily, I've got uh, brand new ones, which I've already bought backups. And uh, well, put that through there, that there, and I can lock it up then. Yeah, bloody key. As you can see, snap right in the barrel. So that sucks. Anyway, I'm going to get in there because now I can put some water into the, the feeder and I uh, can get the eggs out. I've got corn all over the floor here, so what we might do is let the chickens uh, clean up a bit, eh? Right, be right back, folks. At least we've got the lock off anyway. Yep, they couldn't pick the bloody thing out, so we ended up chopping the lock clean off. Um, after a lot of faffing about, I wish I'd cut the right right um right side then it would have just swung round but no I cut the wrong side anyway we got the lock off chickens were fine um do as I say don't do as I do now you see me I had no glasses gloves and I didn't have um a back in um a guard on it now I've, I've been a welder fabricator for the last 35 years I've done work for BNFL, British Nuclear Fuels, I've done loads of MOD work I've used a grinder, a grinder probably every single day of them years and I've never <laughs> had any damage, I never hurt myself once I know what I'm doing but for God's sake don't you do what I did always wear gloves, glasses and always have the guard on it and hold on to that grinder like your life depended no <laughs> No pussy footing about gently holding it. When you grab hold of a grinder, you hold it solid in your hands. 
and then you do the job because what can happen the grinder can flip out your hands and just like a red hot knife through butter the grinder will chop your fingers off and I've seen it happen but it was raining I was in a rush and um, I've, I've, I've done it a million times before I know you someone is probably going to say well it only takes it happens you only have to do it the once well true but um, anyway we, we got it done and in we went fed the chickens they were quite happy and <laughs> yeah well that was that was the end of that and yeah I was reading my comments uh, there were a few comments made the other day about um, one of the lads, I think it might have been Nick, I might have been, sorry if I'm wrong, or Chris, he said he was um, in Wilco's and um, they've actually he actually got his potatoes in Wilco's. Uh, I thought, oh, that's interesting. We'll have to go on the Grand Tour tomorrow. So that's what I did. Now the Grand Tour for me is going around about 15 garden centres. Um, we went round a few, we worked up to Will Coles, went in and they were just starting to put the seeds, the potatoes and everything out, put the garden section back but we didn't buy out from there so we continued on uh, went through a few more garden centres then we got into Trafford Park and we went into um, B&Q we walked round the garden centre and all of a sudden this guy started wheeling these two trolleys in and on these trolleys was the full selection of potatoes um, you know, and when we're saying the full selection, there's about 20 different varieties there. And I thought, well, Matt, you know what it is? The early bird always gets the biggest worm. So um, I got going through the bags looking at him. I picked the best date out, what I thought was the best date. And um, we've actually got two on order. there would be the Cara and the... Um, cell poles although I don't even know why I've ordered the side poles because I've got a load in my buckets down there still so I could use them at a pinch but anyway I've ordered them they cost me for two two kilo bags 10 quid <laughs> now you could buy four of these um, two kilo bags for 10 quid that's how much they were so I'm going to show you the selection of um, uh, what I bought and uh, we also bought some um, tulips can't resist them guys of two different varieties but I'll show you more of them in a minute but let's show you the spuds first hi right, guys well these are the first earlies that we're going to be growing this year 2018 and um, well as you can see here we've got Penton Javelin we've got Aaron Pilot and we've got Red Duke of York now these are all be growing in buckets inside the greenhouses we're going to start these in probably the second week in February get them off to an early start in the greenhouses um, they should be fine we grow them every year same time anyway and uh, we do all right um, I, I've noticed I don't know if you've noticed but you can buy them you can buy two for a fiver or buy one for four quid so it's always wise to buy the you know go get the two and you've got a selection to choose from um, and they've also do a, a one kilo bag uh, which are £2.50 normally but if you buy two of them they're three quid and this range is um, from Safe Haven and um, B&Q actually pumped these out and um, that's where they've, these have come from and uh, they really really are uh, good, good potatoes like I say early bird gets the best worm and they was rolling these out as I was actually walking into the uh, gardening section so I got first bite of the cherry and I've picked the very best out of them all and that's what I suggest everybody else does now if they've got the opportunity and they're, they're in your store now get them now because in a month's time all what will be left are all the, the crappy ones so this is the first earliest which we're going to be starting in the greenhouses so now I'm going to show you the second earliest so watch this space so uh, this is the second earlies that we're growing this year and we've got uh, Maris Pear, Kestrel and Nicola now these are lovely potatoes we grow pretty much every year and um, again you know you, you're buying two for a five or rather than spending four quid on just one pack so it's always as I'm saying um, it's, it's, it's wise to actually get two packs you're saving yourself three quid 
uh, in the process and um, yeah these are the the, the the second earlies which we're going to start off on St Patrick's Day we always start them off outside in buckets St Patrick's Day so these are three um, that we're, we're going to be doing on that particular day so let's move on to the um, the main crop so we move on to the final um, selection of potatoes you can only see two here but there's, there is another four that I need to get there's two already um, on its way um, on order and they cost me £10 for, for two bags of two kilos and they are the South Palmyra and the, the Car Cara and uh, yeah, ten pound for two packs, guys. Five pound a pack, a, a two kilo pack. You could buy potentially four of these packs um, for that money, but uh, they're very hard to get hold of. The um, some of these potatoes, so we 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 ordered them before Christmas. But these are uh, Maris Piper and these Desiree. Obviously, they're the main crop. These will be going in a couple of weeks, about three weeks after the. Um, the second earliest which will go in on St Patrick's Day so they, they you know we get a bit of a, a gap between them and uh, we'll be growing them in buckets outside as we always do but we will be add, adding some Carringfords and um, what was the other one um, it, actually I can't remember the name of it it's a giant potato uh, Tony from UK we grow. He tried to grow them last year. Giant, these giant spuds. He didn't do too bad. He, I think he had one over three pound, uh, which was a pretty nice potato. I had one about two two pound as well. I was chuffed. But I didn't even. I wasn't even trying, and I didn't even have the right variety. But the variety is going to come up here. This is what we're looking for. We only need about five, five of them, five decent potatoes, so we can do five buckets. And potentially get a, a giant potato out of them so uh, yeah that's what we're doing but this is the selection of uh, spuds what we're what we're growing this year so um, there you go it won't be long before we start to put them in buckets and we'll be doing them in um, the clover compost we'll be using blood fish and bone um, we'll be using some of this stuff here let me show you it's a um, microcausal fungi. It's uh, it enhances the the roots on the um, on the, the on the, the potatoes. The, and uh, obviously the, they're okay for doing stuff like this. But we won't be doing we won't be using this on the the giant spuds. That's for sure. Um, Cause we only want one potato. We don't want hundreds of potatoes. So there we go, folks. There are the potatoes. So as you see there, we've got the spuds. What we need is a couple more still to order. There's um, some called Carlingfords. Now, I won't be able to get them for a few weeks yet. And there's that one, what Tony's, the big potato, what Tony's growing. I've not been able to see any of them potatoes anywhere. Um, that's what they are. I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, yeah, if I can, I want, I'm after five of them, five decent ones. I'm going to try and get grow the biggest spud um, this year. Now, I did all right last year. I had a spud about two and a half pound. I didn't intend that um, that particular bucket to be the big one. The ones what I wanted to be big was nothing come of them. So anyway, uh, they're the selection of spuds. But yeah, we, we bought two varieties of tulips and these are the tulips we bought. Well, what you're looking at there is something I couldn't resist. Yes, I bought more tulips, guys. I cannot help myself. No, I didn't pay eight pound for the pack for the two of them. I paid. Are you ready for it? Fifty pence each. There was on offer in um, B and Q, a pound for the two of them. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, grumble at that. And besides, I've never seen these ones before. These double tulips. And I've never seen these um, flag tulips neither. And what particularly drew me into these um, these um, double tulips was this yellow this yellow tulip here and this pink one, absolutely beautiful. Uh, again, the the flag tulips. Again, what drew me into to these was this uh, like creamy one, this creamy tulip here, and this um, this sort of white with flecks of purple in it. Um, I couldn't believe it when I saw them and I thought 50 pence each they're mine so 
there's 24 in there and there's uh, 25 in there that are mixed and um, I just got to find somewhere to put them but um, I do think they're absolutely wonderful and um, well they're certainly going to find a place for them in a minute but uh, yeah we were on the Grand Tour the other day uh, the I always call it the Grand Tour going through garden centre after garden centre I must clock up about 30 miles in total and visit a, oh, about 15, 20 different garden centres and uh, just see what they've got to offer. I, I had to resist all the time in some of them, but I couldn't resist them. It's not for 50 pence a pack. Uh, I don't, what's that? Uh, it's, two, it's two pence a bulb, guys. Two pence a bulb. So uh, it's, it's well worth it. Anyway, I'm going to get out there now and see where I can actually stick these in the ground and uh, well, I'm going to show you in a moment where we're putting them. But there's a the result. So, we left it at that point because we didn't have any planters. I went, I went, went home and um, in the garden and I was looking at the planters and I was just about to grab these two when I heard this voice say, don't you dare touch them planters. I've got bulbs to put in there, so that was my cookie cut, wasn't it? However, it's um, car booting today, so I thought, oh, keep my eye out, I'm sure I'll get a couple. Anyhow, I was on um, first car, the first um, car boot I come to. There they were, da da. Some really nice planters. I said to the guy, what do you want for them? Three quid. So I give you a couple of quid. Not a problem. We did have a lot of um, huffing and puffing about it because there was no holes in the things. He was going, oh, they're great. These they, they hold the water. Well, that's the last thing I want to do is hold the water. Everything will be floating after a while if you leave them outside. Anyway, you're going to see me now. I'm going to show you these um, planters and there's something else I'll be showing you there at the same time. And um, we're going to drill a load of holes in them. And then I'm going to get the, the compost. We're going to be using clover compost. I'm going to show you me doing the bulbs. We ended up, we found another couple of packs of bulbs, um, some alliums and some um, animonus, animosus, anyway. We actually put them in a bit later, so I want to show you me doing them as well. But uh, we'll, we'll put the selection of uh, tulips in. And um, it's a lot better compost than the stuff we was using uh, the last the, in the last episode. So here we go, these, this, these are the planters. I do. I'm going to put uh, an 8mm drill into this and uh, I'm going to put some holes into the bottom of these. And I think uh, Well, I think there's enough drain holes there. <laughs> so that's one anyway. Let's all do the other one. So there you go, we've got, uh, actually that's not bad drilling that, um, free hand, but you know, holes all the way around and right down the centre. So we've got drainage. Now if we didn't do that, these would fill up with water and anything inside it would drown basically. That's why we put holes in them. Now what we need to do is go and find some compost and uh, then we'll have a look at these um, bulbs, what we've actually acquired. And uh, yes, 
going to take a, a few, I don't know how big these are, it doesn't tell you how many litres they are. I would say they're about 30 litres. So, lucky I've got enough uh, compost to, to put in these. So, uh, I'll be right back folks. Well, uh, here's the bag of this uh, clover compost. Uh, it's an old bag. I got it last year. And uh, well, it should come in handy for filling these planters. So here's the fun bit. Very cold. So what we're going to do now? First, we're just going to sit them. around the, the perimeter and see what, what we've got So, there we go. So that's them what equally spaced. Now for these, which we're going to stick in the centre. So, Well, that's fortunate, isn't it? We've got just enough um, 12, 12. I think there's 12 round each to the size, so there's in, in total there's 24 in each. There was an extra one, but look at the state of that, so I don't think we're going to be using that for some reason. Anyway, there we go. So now it's just a matter of pushing them down. And in this compost, it just sinks straight in.
as I figured, the, uh, the 30 litre pot sees. That's the 75 litre bag. So what we're going to do, we're going to stick that, these two, in the greenhouse. We're going to give them a watering, stick them in the greenhouse. We'll keep an eye on them and as soon as they start to come up, we'll drag them out and uh, we'll find somewhere nice to put them. But yep, that's what we've what we put in today. Well, I just found these in the shed. I was just uh, tidying things up and uh, well, there's two more packs here, so I thought, what the hell, we're going to stick these in with them tulips. These will come up, uh, um, there's 20 alliums and there's uh, 20, I mean, uh, animosis. Um, and you should start to see them around about between March and July and uh, they want these um, alliums between May and June, so you know, yeah, we've also got to put these in as well. So, we're going to get not just one lot of uh, colour coming up, we're going to get two lots of colour. Very difficult to see which way to plant these. Now then, these are a weird thing. Yep. So we've got in there now, we've got um, two different varieties of tulips, we've got the alliums and we've also got the anemnomus, um, which are these beautiful um, flowers here, and uh, these alliums here. So everything should, uh, should look wonderful in the next few months. So I'm going to stick these in the greenhouse now, give them a watering. And uh, we'll get them so we'll get them started, and we'll drag them straight out. Probably around about March when we we'll start putting the uh, potatoes in there. So yeah, jobs are good. And... So yeah, we we found another two bags. So then ones the the alliums have come up around about July. So the the tulips are die back. Then the alliums and the I can't say and then man and oh, oh sod it anyway. They'll come up as well and the beautiful as well, some beautiful flowers there, so I can't wait for them so to as we up. speak, it's starting to get darker, <laughs> it's, it's getting dark now, so I'm not going to hang about too much more, um, quick update on the, on the chicken pen, or the coop, now I can tell you, it's definitely on my plot, I'm telling you no more because I'm doing a video, um, uh, renovating it, what have you? So I'll be showing you that shortly, and uh, we'll put a, we're going to go on a timer um, for how long it takes me to put it back together. So um, that should be fun doing that. I'll be showing you that shortly. But uh, yeah, it's uh, come on this morning, bloody cold, and that's why I put this coat on, guys. I probably missed a load of things out on the video. We we'll always can put them in on the next video, um, but. Uh, I should be inside my greenhouse, <laughs> not in my, in, inside my shed actually, but I've filled my shed full of rubbish. I need to get that rubbish out of there into that one there, 
and then I can get to my stove and have my fire. My fi I've got gas in my fire. I've got gas in my stove. I could do bacon eggs if I really wanted to. I could cook anything I wanted, but I can't get in there to get at them. I've got that much rubbish, so I think we're, we're going to be having a big bonfire and getting rid of it all. <laughs> um, the, the stuff that we don't get rid of, I'll give away to friends. I'll get rid of it somehow, but there's all sorts of rubbish in there, what doesn't need to be in there. I could do with taking, getting rid of it. I could take some home, I suppose. It's nothing value. It's uh, all stuff that, we, that I need to to do what I do on here and I'm actually going to put some lights in there I've got the solar panel I've got the battery I've got all the gubbins to wire it all up so um, yeah watch your space for that that's uh, that'll be another video but um, yeah I've waffled long and hard and long enough so I'm um, with that I'm gonna draw it to a close before it gets completely um, dark out there but I hope you enjoyed the video um, like I say, next one would probably, would probably be the chickens, but I'm, I'm chomping at the bit. I'm chomping at the bit to get me start my seeds off. Nothing I can do about I don't really want to do it now. I'm too old enough. I know Sean, he can't help himself. He's uh, That's the Sean from the Art Channel. <laughs> He's already get, got going there. Um, but um, I've, at least I've got a few bulbs to plant. So, I mean, I, I'm, that's my fix for the next couple of weeks. But... Yeah, there's a few things before I should I should have gone, but there's a few things before you can actually start now, and then um, the celery and celeria you can actually do them now. Um, so if you if you want to get them in, um, you can actually start them off. They take a long time to to grow, and soon soon you can get them started, the better. Um, I just seen a little. What's the name? Go past the window there, then. Um, what do you call them, Bren? Never mind. That reminds me. I was going to show you um, Quasimodo, but I'll show you him again. You'll love him when you see him. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye for now.